Rodaline, just your, your, your small words on this and then we'll move on it to the is. next. Um, good morning to Ghanaians and good morning to Mr. Alan Ting. Wherever you are, I hope you're doing good. Um, you know, I was excited seeing two new faces. Um, the last time it was seven faces that uh, looked rather, to me, uh, partisan. But uh, two new faces were added to the group. So You uh, mean five? Yeah, there were five. And that looked at the odd order. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we have five two, which means that there can be discerning voices within the Supreme Court. Um, and that advises me to say that we should be asking the Chief Justice, with all humility, to start using the automated um, technological system of empaneling uh, judges and also fixing up cases. This, I think, for me, uh, will bring us more uh, uh, in terms of trust and um, whatever we would be thinking of the um, Supreme Court. Um, I don't know, but somehow we've not read the reasons given by the various judges. Uh, so we, it's very difficult to actually um, discuss this issue. But I am excited mm -hmm. that at least there were some discerning voices, and I would love to read those ones. But I would also want to insist mm -hmm. that uh, from now on, uh, the Chief Justice must not empanel people on cases just based on her own um, choices, but it should be done because, um, well, it should be done by electronic mm -hmm. system that is in the, in the courts. All right. Uh, Rodali, going and taking a cue from where Beatrice left off will mean that the Electoral Commission then is up again the stakes in terms of public opinion. And should we be concerned about we that? We should be concerned. Um, views out there is that the Electoral Commission is at the beck and call of the ruling party. And that is not a good thing. Uh, Madame Jean Mensa must be told in the face that she holds the key to peace in this country by doing the right thing. She should do the right thing. She should make sure that we have a free, fair, and transparent election. Asking um, CSOs not to come, uh, or whatever, is, I don't know. I ask myself, why is she stopping people from going to observe? Because these are the people who go to see things, come and tell us. You know, we, we don't expect your people to come and tell us because we, we, we don't trust them. So um, no matter how small a CSO is, if they have written for accreditation to observe um, the elections, I think they should be given observer status. At the end of it, um, Jim Mesa has not shown Ghanaians um, this whole thing up about her being trustworthy. Like Bishri said, for the first time, as I sit here, I don't know the results of the 2020 elections because there were about so many figures coming out. And for me, that is not good enough. Um, for us to sit and also, um, I was reading through the uh, responsibilities and whatever of the EC, and I realized that it is mandatory for her to send not just one observer during the printing of ballot papers. But we were up, up told by, um, I think, the uh, NDC IT guy that they gave them one person, as if that person wouldn't go to the loo, and if that person... Well, that's for all the parties. Well, but it works for all the parties. The Electoral Commission said it works for all the parties. Yeah, but now they've made it two. Why? It's always been two. That's the convention. It's always been two. So why, why, why even think about it at all, that you should give them one? They will not wee-wee. They will not eat. You know, if you're doing things to help the ruling party. Please, use sense, common sense. Are you making a claim? I'm making that a claim. That the actions of the Electoral Commission it is, 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 aiding, is, is, give, is aiding the NPP to stick on to power. That condoning and conniving. Conniving and condoning. Madam Rodolin, yes, is that what I you're claiming? Saying, that is what I am saying. That is what I am saying. Because you see, at the end of the day, I, I, I represent an independent candidate who cannot go to IPAC or will just have to go to IPAC as an observer. And I can tell you that that's, this particular independent candidate has gone around the country, has more following than those parties that we would call other parties that are sitting there making laws for us to go into this, this election or be giving out their ideas. You understand? So I wouldn't understand why there are... The, the, the EC itself knows 
that some of the parties that are in IPAC, for instance, do not deserve to be there. If you follow the rules and regulations governing political parties and how they get to be in IPAC, come on. I have seen, I, 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 was, in a <laughs> I was in a walk and I, I turned back, I looked and I said, I wish one of those parties could get half of these numbers of people during a walk. But we don't even have you mean to say. The movement for change and yes. the alliance. Yes. You had so many people. I mean, I looked at the thousands and I'm like. That you were wondering why I was wondering, some of the parties yeah, who, are there and you are, are there not. And there. I'm not. I'm wondering. Why, really? Exactly. I'm wondering why we are not there. Why why are people treating us as, as if we, we don't exist? You know, we do exist. So um, for me, the public trust is very important on the Electoral Commission. And she must live above all the noises that are coming from the general public. That she's not being fair and she seems to have an agenda, an agenda to rig this election for the MPP, which is wrong. It's terribly um, unpalatable for most of us. We don't want to hear that because we want everybody to accept the elections, to accept the results that she will be churning out in December. We want to be able to accept that. We don't want a situation where we will have go to court because no one is going to go to court. Okay. We won't go to court because we can't go for 7-0 or 9-0 or 12-0 because some people will just be put there to say I, 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 and that's it. We won't do that. So for me, I think that they must give um, a hearing to the CSOs that have been asked not to come again or not to observe. They should be allowed to observe. Um, I'm also thinking that because of public interest in this, everyone who wants to be there should be given an accreditation to be there. After all, what do they do? Just walk around? You walk around, you observe, you ask a few questions for people, and that's all there is to it. What, what is she afraid of? Let us see some transparency going forward. She must be transparent in her dealings with all parties. We have gotten our voters register. We are going to look through it. But we've asked that at least they should give us a breakdown data on it. And we are hoping that she'll do it in good time. And we wish that she would accord us the same respect that she accords the two parties. That's the MPP mm. and the NDC. Mm. I'm, I'm only saying that the EC should be thinking of how to give us a free and fair um, election. And I'm hoping that we will not have any military presence at the place. Um, the elections are duties of the police. And sometimes they can bring in some few prison officers and the likes. But we don't want to see any uniformed army person around the, 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 the ballot boxes or in that um, area. We will also want to see the national security um, people outside of, of it all. So in this election, we are hoping that the EC will play its part and make everybody happy. You know, we don't want to go to court. I mean,